be seen and show up and shine and and radiate and you know have attention be brought to us and that's okay Beyonce is a beautiful one like she's got that queen bee energy she's owning it all Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Motherhood Made Magic podcast. I am your host, Anna Cusack, and today I am doing my first ever group interview. So we have Zoe and Tracy Meacham here today, a mother-daughter dream team duo who are experts in all things feminine energy and how that translates to relationship, to birth, to women's circles, coaching, all of life, the whole spectrum. So... Firstly, I would like to introduce you to Zoe, if you want to say hi, Zoe. Hello. Zoe is a midwife, life coach, and feminine embodiment leader. She has been a midwife for six years. She's taken her traveling across Australia and New Zealand for women's and men's personal growth workshops. Is there anything else that you would like to add to that intro? Yeah, it really started for me when I um, ended a relationship and I just, I thought he was it and then it just felt so empty. So then I've evolved with me with intimacy and sex and wanting to do that and I've followed these people on social media and done my own practices and it's been such an evolution of that and then just in the last four years with more of the personal growth that's where I've really embodied it more for myself so it's like I understood it and I've embodied it now and I just love the practice and yeah talking about it with mum all the time and not really the kind of topic that does come up too often when I'm in a room with adult daughter and mother together but (laughs) Tracy I'm going to read your intro next so Tracy's a wife and mother to three adult children she has a nursing background and now finds herself in the personal development space and loving it she has a life coaching business where she runs women's circles and does one-on-one coaching around relationships family relationships and also couples relationships what would you like to add in, Tracy? I guess it started for me with my own relationship, you know, my own marriage that wasn't ideal. It wasn't where I wanted it to be. I didn't know what I wanted it to be, but I knew, I knew that and felt that, you know, what, what I was living wasn't, wasn't sustainable for me um, and ended up me leaving my marriage for, you know, about six months and then coming back. So it's been a growth journey for me. Um, around relationship and my own personal relationship so that was you know the starting point so we're really not beating around the bush on any of this we've really dived straight into sharing bearing ourselves Mm -hmm. to this conversation so the topic that you have chosen together for this I nearly said workshop I feel like I'm part of a master class here Mm -hmm. but for this conversation is around queenhood This is something that I'm new to. We're going to start from the start. What I want to know first is what does queen energy mean in the context of our lives as women? And why is this topic one that you've chosen for a podcast that's generally about motherhood and womanhood? Queen energy is something that's untapped in all of us. It's something that we we are responsible for, that we can make available to us at any time. Um, it's a state of energy and I think it's just so rejuvenating. It's in motherhood, in womanhood, in parenthood, in relationships in general. It's like just an untapped source that, I, as you said, you know, you hadn't heard too much about it. It's, it's something that Zoe and I riff on every day. We talk about our own relationships and you know, even our relationship as a mother and daughter. You know, energy is energy and we, we have this available source of queen energy to tap into. Zoe, how would you define queen energy? It seems like an abstract concept until you've felt it. What is it mm. that you're actually talking about? When I feel queen energy, it's more of like a, a centering point for me where I'm not looking external for any validation or anything. It's more of like, I've got this, like I know who I am standing on your own two feet you're feeling your truth you're speaking your truth and you're knowing what you want in each moment so like you're following your desires in life you are unapologetically receiving you're unapologetically giving 
it's just that whole connection to yourself that brings you in that creates you to be a, a more whole a more whole person woman that yeah is is just showing up on unapologetically and is being a light for others to do the same and that's what I see yeah, with like motherhood as well it's like that light of wow that's you know my mum so is it perhaps something that like we might not know what queen energy is but we can look at someone like I don't know like Beyonce is on my vision board and you're like you know mm -hmm. she's just she is exuding that self-knowledge self-power is that the kind of vibration that we're Definitely, aiming for yeah. like allowing ourselves to have a presence yeah be seen and show up and shine and and radiate and you know have attention be brought to us and that's okay Beyonce is a beautiful one like she's got that queen bee energy she's yeah owning it I hadn't all. even considered that she calls herself the queen bee doesn't she yeah she does it yeah I think in our in our social upbringing we sort of see queen as just there's only one queen it's a hierarchy and there's only one how does it work when there are multiple women even within the same family who are all accessing their queenhood there's just no competition the real beautiful level playing ground it's just there's no cutting anyone down there's we just celebrate each other we celebrate everything it sounds like it's that be the woman that fixes the other woman's crown without telling her that it was crooked yes. 100%. yeah yeah 100 percent so zoe next one's for you yeah. how do we cultivate this queen energy like if we're going to dead set channel mm -hmm. beyonce but I still mm. have to get up and make breakfast that half of it's going to get thrown on the floor by my kid. Like mm -hmm. how am I going to spend my day cultivating queenhood? Yeah. So there's a lot of feminine practices and feminine is a term used. It's just energy and it's a term that's used and more women have core feminine energy like their core is actually more feminine so normally the feminine practice feels really good for them to do um, in order to bring them back to themselves and that is like dancing practices in the morning putting music on being light flow energy so it's always about coming back to your body and how you feel so that feminine is all about feeling so even if you just like give yourself a body massage or just brush your hand on your arm, I'm literally doing it now, really lightly, it actually brings me back in rather than thinking about, oh, shivers, what have I got to do next? What have I got, you know, up in the head kind of process. And every time we keep coming back into ourselves and into our bodies, we're tapping into more of our feminine core. And then we can identify what do I want from here? Like it speaks louder to us in each moment. It's like, oh, okay, now I want to do this and now I want to do that. And you build this practice within yourself if you keep tapping back into that even throughout the day. It's, it's a practice. It's, we've got to keep doing it in order to tap into that, um, into that source. Into, and then you become the queen energy when you're feeling like you're listening to yourself. So no one else outside of you will listen to you if you're not listening to yourself first. Mm, that's really interesting because a lot of the commentary around motherhood is really asking particularly partners particularly fathers to step up and mm. it sounds like the cultivation of queenhood basically has nothing to do with them does that sound right Tracy yeah that's exactly right it's kind of a bit of pill to swallow almost in that like we know that mothering work is undervalued and loaded up too much how is it not about them because it 100 percent about us and taking 100 percent responsibility for how we show up and and our energy and what we bring to the table so we're not asking them to make us feel anything that we're good mothers or that we're good wives we have this inner knowing that and, res and as Zoe said, beautifully, such a resource already within us that we have available to tap into. And it's our responsibility. You know, it's self-responsibility. It's not up to somebody else outside of us. We are then operating from a place of independence 
in our mm. queenhood, although I, perhaps it's interdependence. I, I consider motherhood as, and, and womanhood as interdependence, giving and receiving, not just yeah. independence, stand on your own two feet. Where does, that, where does that leave our partners, particularly our male partners? I think it takes the pressure off them to have to show up as any way you know the expectation takes the expectations of them off so they can just show up in their way and it's not going to affect us it's like we're not going to get upset by it we're not going to they've got so much less pressure on them to show up in that way yeah i I agree i think i think it, it gives them a chance to also rise it gives them a chance to step in and be seen in their total light as well because you know in my own relationship you know I was this critical never done enough always you know looking for all the ways that he wasn't providing for me now I look at all the ways that he is and and there's so many you know that like it's just it's incredible how you can just flip the switch and have this such gratitude and I just look at him now as, you know, my total king. You know, he, he stands beside me. He's, I'm building him up. Um, and it starts with me. You know, it starts it's with you. It starts in, in how, how you want your relationship to be and to look. And I, I go first always in my relationship. And that's cool. I, I was always waiting, always waiting for him to treat me this way or do this or organise that or, you know, and... I spent 30 years waiting for something that he didn't know. He just didn't know. And now I don't wait. I, I desire it. I desire to be that person who holds hands with their husband when they walk down the street. So I do that and we do that. I'm not waiting for him to do that. It's, it's just different. It's so different. I'm bringing him along with me. Mm. So it almost sounds to me like if we're getting to channel power couple vibes, because that's how I imagine king and queen together, that if we're wanting to be power couple, the queen leads and Mm. therefore the king comes. Whereas if we look at it the other way, the king comes and the woman is the damsel in distress that's getting rescued. Yeah. Sounds so right. And we lead from a place of I want to go, I desire this. So I'm going to go this way. I would love for you to come. You know, my heart is always open. I'm always open. I hope you choose to come with me. We're like the muse in that we go and we do this and the, and the masculine, they, the king energy, they see that and they smell that and they're like, oh, where is she going? I must go too. And, you know, they want to come when you are in that feminine muse energy when you were walking your path like a queen if you're like come on come on please do it you know that's not inspiring that's not being a muse they're not going to want to come it's like being the honey pot that attracts the bees or being yeah. a flower that attracts the bees there's a pissed off energy you know that real pissed off like you know that oh, if you love me you want to vacuum the house yeah, yeah. Yeah. you're always yeah. huffing and puffing and oh You know, can't you get it right? Like I've told you before. I'll just do it myself. Don't worry about it. I'll do it myself. Would each of you be able to give some examples from your your experience, your life of times Mm -hmm. that you have stepped up into your queen energy and led and how that has played out in your Mm. relationship? I have one from just a a few days ago where we're looking at buying a sauna. So my husband... He rang me, he goes, oh, I've spoken to them and I've got them, I've got them down to, you know, this, this amount of money. And, and he goes, I said, oh, that's fantastic. That's so great. What a great deal you've done, you know, really praised him up. Like, he goes, really? He said, I was so nervous to tell you. And I said, oh, no, I know that the masculine loves a challenge. I know that for him, it's like he's gone out and slayed the dragon for me. Mm. Whereas the old Tracy would have said, why do you have to always be, you know, we've got the money. Why can't you just pay the full price? You know, you don't have to squabble all the time with people. But for him, it's like a challenge. It's like he, he's, he was really, and I could just tell he was just so chuffed with himself. Whereas I'd normally knock that, knock that down. You know, I'd normally make that wrong. I don't want mm. to make him wrong. 
I don't want to make him wrong anymore. That doesn't make your first sauna together very nice if you've made him wrong about it, does it? <laughs> no, that's that's a really good where I, I I can really flip it for myself, and I want him to rise. Beautiful. How about you, Zoe? One thing that I notice is I take a lot of signs from what's happening in my world. So even if I'm not in a relationship with somebody at the time, I still see how much is coming to me. So I will see people that are, you know, at work, they're like, oh, I'll do that for you. Or, you know, bending over backwards to come and help you or open the door or you walk into a cafe and, and things happen where you can tell you're in that energy because people are at service. People want to serve you. They're like, they, they see your light and they're like, oh, you know, if Beyonce walked into the cafe, sometimes that, well, that's what it can feel like. Queen B has entered. <laughs> <laughs> so I see that definitely. And I get a lot of responsiveness from my environment. Like if I'm not feeling quite tapped in, I will see that also in, as a reflection in, in my environment, just with people every day. But I have a similar, like a, a similar one to mom in that I, I've mentioned before, I love it when a, a coffee is made for me first thing in the morning, or it was mentioned as like a passing comment, like maybe I could make you a coffee in the morning. And I was like, oh, I would love that. I would love for you to like, I would just love a coffee in the morning. And some people, you know, could be like, oh yeah, cool. That would be great. Thanks. Whereas I was like, no, that actually would make me feel so good. So then the first time the coffee was made, it was like, oh my goodness, thank you. And now that is that in, you know, that is actually now a thing where it's, it's wanting to happen for me because it Mm. feels so good for them to do that, for him to do that. Sorry. For him to, to make me that coffee and see how it is received, then, you know, it's one, it's, he's doing it more and more. He's wanting to do it more and more. It's a whole thing learning receiving. Mm. Oh yeah. (laughs) It's a really big thing. And it's something that comes up a lot in my work in sort of planning postpartum support for people who are having their babies. This idea of perhaps not being worthy to receive but actually just not knowing how to ask for anything, let alone receive it. Is there a strategy that you use? There are different ways that I might work around that in my business, but is there a strategy that you each use with your midwifery clients or your coaching clients that helps tap into that? It's safe for me to receive assistance from from the people that want to help me. I think it's about them tapping into like what I find first happens is they don't know what they want. Mm. And I think that's hard when, when somebody comes up to you and I have had this in relationships when they're like, well, what would make you happy? Like, what do you want in this instance? And I'm like, Oh, I don't know. Oh my God. How do I not know what I want? How can I not tell you? Like, of course you don't know what I want because I don't even know what I want. So I think that that's a big thing around what would support you in this, in this moment. Like, what do you desire as, as a woman, as do you feel okay to ask for that? And, you know, I guess going through, if not, and there could be so many reasons like childhood stuff or is a woman allowed to, did I see my mom asking for it? Did I see my mom receiving well as a kid? Was that, did that look okay? But I think first it comes back to, what do you really want? And then letting that be okay for you to ask for that. A lot of the time in early motherhood, when we first think about receiving, the thought goes to receiving sexually. And that's a lot of the time not the primary thing on a mother of young children's radar. And Mm. sometimes it can be a practice to bring in ways that you can receive that is something in between like, no, don't touch me and intercourse. And there's not much happening in between times of affection or I don't know, receiving acknowledgement or whatever it is. I had a day recently where I was, I was pretty much fuming and it had been a really hard day with my toddler. And she just conked out for one of those really awkward 5.30 in the afternoon naps lying on me on the couch and I couldn't move. And I was just, you know, trying to calm myself down doing all the deep breaths, all those things. I just went, you know, what would like actually make this situation okay right now? 
it would be a head massage. And I did my little waiter click my fingers kind of thing and <laughs> came over and I just had the most beautiful like five minute head massage. And by the end of that, all of my body was just as relaxed as I'd been trying to make it be and not been succeeding in it. It could be things like I did an interview recently with a lady who teaches baby massage and now not only do I do sort of the cream on my daughter, she doesn't do a great job of it, but she puts the cream on my legs and does a bit of a like rub around with that. So like where can we be receiving from our partners, but also from the environment, like you said, Zoe, even mm. from our children. So it doesn't feel like we're in this place of give, 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 because the give is the masculine. Mothering mm. even is masculine polarity that we're holding most of the time. Where can we find the feminine in our, in our everyday practice, everyday life? Mm. Yeah, because if your core is feminine, that's only going to give you more energy. You know, that's your life source. So tapping mm. into that will give you more juice to keep going throughout your day to be the mum. It is having music on and it is forcing yourself to be playful even when you don't feel like it. Anything you would like to speak on, Tracy? To amplify it. So if they're doing the right thing is to really like, with the Zoe, with the coffee, like... <gasps> Yes, yes, I really, I would love a coffee, you know, and then they really get the message. It's our responsibility to, you know, really give them really clear clues as to what we, what we want. You know, your husband jumped at the chance to be able to give you a head massage. Like, it's like, of course, no worries. You know, they, they're happy to, when we're, we're never asking for too much. It's, mm. it's not too much. And I think we think that it's too much a lot of the time, but it, but it isn't. And it's rejuvenating. As you said, you just felt like, oh my goodness. It was like, you know, I'd been to a day spa, had a five minute head massage. Like it just lets us, receiving is really, really difficult. Like I a hundred percent appreciate that. It's, and so and I have this conversation a lot of, it's, it's really difficult mm -hmm. to receive. And it is a practice. It's something we need to practice, you know, every day to receive, and that receiving might be if someone's really beautifully packed your groceries into the shopping bag to just like smile and say how beautiful it was to have someone do that for you. <laughs> it's not, mm. It doesn't have to be anything major. No, it's just noticing, isn't it? Thank you it's for really letting great. me in in front of you when I had to merge. Thank yeah. you for stopping when I was crossing the, the pedestrian crossing. Yes. Small things. And I, I even find... Um, Today I got offered for someone to take my suitcase for me. Or would you like me to take that for you? And I was like, no, no, no. You know, Miss Independent over here. I got it. I can do it. But how beautiful would it be if I was like, yeah, I would actually love you to do that. Thank you. You know, to to receive those little things where we're like, we can do it. I've got it. You know, no, it's fine. But mm. actually we do want to, like if we ask ourselves deep down, I would love for someone to take my suitcase for me. You know, those little things that it's, we probably say no before we even think about it. But if we allow people to do it, which they want to do, then, you know, that would be, that would feel good for us too. I had an experience a while ago as well where I had a little kid fall asleep in the car just before we get where we're going to. All I had to do was post this letter. There was a lady who was walking through the car park to the post office and wound down my window and she had her full mask on and everything and I was a bit like oh I don't know if I'm gonna if she'll be okay with this but I just and I said oh excuse me would you mind just dropping this it looks like you're going to the post office would you just mind dropping this in the post box on the way past just have my baby sleeping in the car and I can't I can't park and get out and go there it's not safe and she just gave me the most knowing look like Mm -hmm. yeah love of course and I could have gotten really angry and stalked home and just like slammed it down on the table and been like everything is always timed terribly why can't we ever get this right but sometimes mm -hmm. it was just it's just asking I just had a thought when you were talking before about the whole king vibes is the idea that we let them know our desire we thank them for profusely but we don't necessarily give them the instructions of the in-between like that is their quest their challenge to figure out how they're going to do that in-between part yeah 100 percent. and also if you 
we might think that we want it done. We want a coffee. And so for me, I would make the coffee this way and I'll put it in this cup and that would be perfect. And the way that he does it, it's different, you know, like he's not us. So, but most of the time, if we let him come to his own conclusion, the way he's going to do it, the drive to the restaurant that we wouldn't have gone that way, but he's chosen that way, you know, it actually comes so much better if you look for that. It actually comes like, oh, it was a beautiful bigger cup or it was fine china or things you don't look for. When you receive it from the masculine, there's a, there's a reason why he's done it the way he's done it and they don't want to be told, you know, their mum would tell them, can you put it in this cup, darling? Can you, can you make sure you turn right at these lights? Like that's his mum. He doesn't want to go home with his mum. Like he doesn't want to, that's not who he wants to come home to every night. So it's about like allowing our king, if he's going to be the king, he need, he's going to, he can find his own way. He's a capable man. He runs the world. Mm, rightly or wrongly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see how this relates to parenting as well. And I see how much, because we're socialized into mum spends the most time with the child develops a really competent way of doing something. And then dad hasn't had as much practice and is then being watched in his attempts or left really detailed instructions and maybe something on that gets missed or the pants get put on back to front or something and there can be fallout from that. And I think sometimes we just actually need to give it a bit of space for him to figure it out for himself and to make the mistakes. And if he wants to ask you for some advice, he can, but we don't need to give it in advance on everything. No, no, <laughs> we don't. Not like they're more than capable. They've been watching us do it time and time again. And and there's there's what is the saying? There's more roads to China, or there's you know like there's there's different ways to do to skin a cat. You know like yeah. And children need to get you know that different people do it different ways. You know they're not always going to be um, with us. You know, twenty four seven. You know, seven days a week. It's they they need to get used to how. Yeah, well, that's how Dad does it. You know, it's like it's okay. You're you're going to be okay. Mm. You know, and then and then it's okay when you know someone else. You know, the grandma or someone else looks after them. Then they're, they're okay. Well, Grandma's got a way of doing it because so does Mum and Dad. It's totally cool. Yeah, and that doesn't mean lower your standards and let them off the hook for everything. It means believe that they are capable and instill the belief in them that they are capable Mm. and see them rise to that challenge. Rise, yeah, and acknowledge it. Who who says that our way is the right way compared to their way? Mm -hmm. Like who says that our way to make coffee or to talk to our children or who says that that's the right way compared to whose standards? That is a rabbit hole in itself, isn't it? That's going down (laughs) the wormhole. Where can we find each of you? Zoe, you go first. You can find me um, on Facebook and Instagram, Zoe Meacham. I think my Instagram is zoe.meacham, but you'll find me. And yeah, I'm just just starting up a course for four weeks where um, each week we'll go a little bit more into masculine and feminine and feminine embodiment to find our own goddess within. So that's for four weeks and you get Vox the support with that one as well. Cool. So for the unacquainted, that means an online course that you also get voice messaging support through a special app. And how about you, Tracy? So you can find me on Facebook on Tracy Meacham and also Instagram, which I'm not on there very often, but I'm on there. Meacham Tracy is where you'll find me. Beautiful. And I'll put your website's interview on the show notes for this episode. Catch you on the interwebs. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you loved listening to this episode as much as I loved recording it. If you love what I do, follow along with me on social media at Anna Cusack Postpartum on Facebook and Instagram. Check out my website www.annacusack.com.au or find my book Mama You're Not Broken Unmasking the Unspoken Emotions of Modern Motherhood on Amazon. See you next time.